Kevin LaShawn and his large group of friends feel fairly safe doing a 24-hour challenge in a mental asylum that's supposed to be haunted. They aren't expecting to find much, and for a while they don't. However, two experiments stand out in particular. First, they invite the ghosts to play a game of cards with them by setting up flashlights in a semicircle. The flashlights stay turned off during most of this experiment, but they do seem to repeatedly respond when one person in particular comes to the table. Perhaps this person has a natural tendency to attract spirits more than the others. I guess you're done wanting me to play. Come over here, sit by me. They want you to play. Oh, these flashlights are turning on by themselves. Later, Kevin is playing with an app on his phone that is supposed to communicate with ghosts when he gets some pretty interesting responses. Is anybody in here? What's your name? My name's Kevin. What's your name? Even if this app is programmed to say scripted phrases at random intervals, I do think it's odd that it says something similar to Kevin's name. Shortly after he introduces himself, overall Kevin is unable to verify that this location is haunted. Though many of his viewers have decided it most likely is, let me know what you think about this entry and what other experiments Kevin and his friends could have done to summon any spirits. Two school custodians are standing in the middle of a creepy old boiler room. One of them is the supervisor, and he was called in after his co-worker said that she saw objects moving around on their own. He records the situation for legal workplace reasons, and the two of them reluctantly investigate. Alright, hang on, hang on, just wait. I don't want to go back there. Let me just take a look. Now, you say what happened now? This door shit that is still. It's self, Dave. All right. The supervisor doesn't see anything out of the ordinary, and he reassures his co-worker that everything is okay. He encourages her to go deeper into the boiler room and get something that she needs, and that's when things go wrong. Is there anybody back here? <laughs> go ahead. No. Ah! What's that? Ah! Oh my God. A metallic chair scrapes towards them on its own and they both fall back. I guess the supervisor could have pulled on a string, but I think the chair moves a farther distance than he would have been able to pull judging from where he was standing. This video will definitely make you want to double check all of your wiring in your home. Eric McGregor takes one look at this discolored brown outlet and identifies a major problem. It's catching on fire. Amber sparks shoot out of the middle of a frayed wire that is still hot and fully charged. It looks like the wall is going to catch on fire at any moment, especially here 23 seconds into the video. Eric calmly unscrews the outlet and plucks it free from the wall, which in turn trips the breaker and turns off all the power. I don't know if this is the safest solution, so you definitely shouldn't consider this video to be a tutorial of any kind, but his strategy does seem to work in this specific instance. Sometimes these kind of faulty wires can go undetected for months or even years. All it takes in the meantime is one random spark, especially late at night, to change everything forever. A YouTuber named Johnny Paranormal decides to also go into the infamous Aokihara Forest. He boosts the sound of his microphone to capture every paranormal sound, and he is surprised at what he records. For example, tell me if you hear a demonic growl here. Or a quick coughing noise here despite Johnny Paranormal being all alone. Or a second person quietly whispering the word help. I was just... These creepy sounds continue to follow him throughout the entire video, which is roughly an hour and a half long. I think that's way more editing than most people would be willing to put into a fake video, so I think there's a strong possibility that this is real. What's especially concerning is this demonic noise that follows him wherever he goes. That's saying my battery's going flat. 
a king. If Johnny Paranormal really was surrounded by the supernatural, then I hope nothing followed him out of the forest. Hey, Michael, is that you? This video, known to most only as Michael Is That You, has gone viral and spawned a ton of rumors and re uploads. People are trying to figure out what this creature is and if it's ever been sighted before. One rumor is that the eyes look similar to a February 11th, 2013 rake sighting video taken from somebody's backyard deep in the woods. Dude, there's some glowing eyes right there. The eyes are the same color and similarly spaced apart. It also holds its head roughly at the same angle, and like the Michael Is That You video, the eyes never once blink. On April 11th, 2013, there was a second rake sighting from the same person. And once again, this does look similar to three seconds into the Michael video where the creature first turns around. Although this 2013 sighting remains an unsolved mystery to this day, the same cannot be said for the Michael Is That You video. I've gotten a lot of requests to analyze this scary video, so I did some digging and here is my final analysis. While this video looks convincing, it's not real. I did some research and was able to track down the original upload to a channel called Zulu Bao Productions. I know this is the original video because it's the only upload that shows exactly how it was made in a 3D rendering program. You can see the creature itself, which isn't so scary. Once it stands up straight and loses those glowing green eyes, Once he does make the arm super long and thin, and folds it into an unnatural position in the corner of the room, do we get the creepy mysterious creature that went viral, added detailed skin texture and we're back to horrifying. I just wanted to give credit to Zach of this channel because so many people asked me to cover this video that I knew I had to find the original source and dispel the rumors. So the next time you see this video somewhere on the internet, you'll know it was fake. This was just something Zach did for fun and practice in his own words on December 18th, 2019. He never expected it to go viral but appreciates the recognition. I think he did a very convincing job, so good of a job that it is still sparking rumors and making its rounds on the internet to this day. A ring doorbell captures some strange activity outside of Mike Crook's house that could be paranormal or a camera glitch. A shadow person walks down the sidewalk, mysteriously disappears, and even though he never emerges from the other side of the bush, you can still hear footsteps that actually sound like they are getting closer to the camera, if anything. The audio also plays weird noises at the exact moment the ghost disappears, which is even more evidence that this frightening moment could be paranormal. Considering this bizarre event was caught on camera around Halloween, I think it was probably edited, but maybe this is proof that there is something supernatural to All Hallows' Eve after all. This paranormal activity was caught on a camera that's displaying an incorrect time. A YouTuber named For Your Viewing Pleasure thinks they have caught a ghost on video sometime around 3 a.m., not 1.24 like the camera says. Regardless, some creepy moments have been caught on tape as their home CCTV system plays back a bizarre ghost-like in front of the camera. Another thing that's weird besides the ghost is how the background goes totally black for 6 seconds and then even stays black for 1 second after the ghost is no longer caught on tape. For your viewing pleasure says they hope this is a bug, even though they think it's probably paranormal. One person suggested that he has not caught a ghost sighting on video, but a moth instead. These creepy moments caught on camera from 2 to 4 seconds do look like possible wings in motion when slowed down, but I'm not sure what to think. Both sides have good arguments, so take one final look and tell me if this looks like a paranormal security video to you or not. Alright guys, I'm gonna show you one of the reasons we hate this house. There's a YouTuber named Not Your Average Wife, who apparently does not live in your average home either. 
Her dog Catherine absolutely refuses to go down the steps leading to their basement. Follow the dog's eyes because I think it might be seeing something down there that none of us can. Catherine, come on, baby. Come on, pretty. Come on, baby. Come Not even a nudge from behind can convince Catherine to go down the stairs. Come on, Catherine. And just to prove it's not a general fear of steps, they show her using different stairs without a problem. Maybe the dog almost fell down basement steps or something and is now afraid of them. At least, that's the only non-paranormal explanation I can think of. And if it is paranormal, based on how Catherine is acting, it must be something sinister in that basement. An outdoor restaurant is about to be creepy, and it's all caught on CCTV tape. This top right couple seems to be having an intense conversation. At 10 seconds, there is some chest pounding on both sides. It looks like a bad breakup or something until 25 seconds when he stands up and is ready to storm out but then points at the food lodged in his throat. They weren't having an argument at all. He was slowly becoming more and more unable to breathe. She starts patting him on the back but apparently this is a big mistake. I'm not giving any medical advice but the Mayo Clinic says not to do this unless you're trained to deliver a special back blow between the shoulder blades. From what I've read, patting someone on the back can sometimes make the food move further down the windpipe and get even more stuck. A brave restaurant worker gets behind him, makes a fist with one hand slightly above the belly button, grabs his fist and gives a quick upward thrust as if picking him off the ground for a moment. This is called the Heimlich Maneuver, and it's a good thing somebody in the restaurant knew it. Most states have laws in place for restaurant staff to have this kind of training, and this scary scenario caught on tape is exactly why. I encourage everyone to get the proper training because you never know when this could happen to someone nearby, maybe even you. There must be no scarier feeling than having an entire crowd watch you helplessly while you can't breathe. This man who helped him is truly a hero. It's 3 in the morning when Daniel, Christensen's dog, begins growling and the bedroom door swings open. Daniel is staring into the dark hallway while recording with his camera, waiting for something to happen. What a trip. Here you can see what could be the head, shoulders, and left arm of a shadow person. It's towards the corner of the room on the right hand side. Let me know if you see it. Then the shadow appears again, much closer this time. It's way too dark though, so I can't tell for sure if it's a shadow or just his thumb. What is up? We are back and right now we just hit a random abandoned, haunted, like really haunted house apparently. Uh, New Hope PA is well known for a lot of abandoned, maybe haunted paranormal sites. Alright guys, so like I said before, we are exploring a really haunted house in a really haunted town. Apparently, I don't know the exact story on it, but Tim, what was it? People left because this house for being so like haunted or like paranormal, yeah. stuff like that. Kyle McGran goes exploring upstairs and while filming random rooms, a person briefly appears in the mirror. It could have been one of his friends, but this person is covered in darkness despite standing in an area that's well lit. At the other end of the house is a small boarded up attic that fills them with dread upon entering. Bro, this room is creepy. Literally left a lot of stuff. Shoes. Yo, this movie is called Without a Trace. I know it was a 90s movie, but finding a videotape called Without a Trace in the middle of an attic of an abandoned house where the family mysteriously disappeared is not a good sign. Nor is anything that's stained red. Yeah, it's red in there. Oh my god. Some sort of scary voice is caught on tape, one belonging to a ghost or a demon that none of them seemed to hear at the time. 
They go downstairs into an old creepy basement that makes them feel so overwhelmed with fear that they only make it one step further before they turn around. Something tells me this is where the family still is. It seemed that whatever haunted this family has only grown stronger over time and drives Kyle's group away in less than 10 minutes. A team of ghost hunters are inside of an abandoned home when they catch what appears to be a transparent phantasm at the top of the stairs. Hold still for a second. Hello? I'll admit that I did not see what they were talking about at first, but when you replay the video at half speed, it's easier to see a clear outline of a person's head and shoulders. The figure starts out facing the camera and then darts through a door on the right. I'm not sure if this is CGI or not, but let me know if you can see it, and if so, what you think it was. Will you expect to find some creepy stuff in an abandoned funeral home? Abandoned remains are probably not among the usual suspects. Published to YouTube by RNK All Day in March of 2020, the channel writes, we found ashes inside an abandoned funeral home that was condemned due to the funeral director leaving and hiding bodies. It was located in North Carolina. It was closed down in 2012 after client complaints. The funeral home's former owner was put behind bars for not burying the individuals. RNK All Day explores this home and its unnerving history. Amongst the creepy things found inside are Polaroids of the passed on individuals and a squatter's bed made up inside the building. But of course, the most unsettling thing they encountered was a bag of ashes in a torn cardboard box. According to a timestamp on the box, they were from 1995, meaning they've remained there for over two decades. Let's hope they finally received a proper burial. Do you believe our loved ones never leave us? Published by Seth Ponder in April of 2014, this spirit of a grandma wants a cookie. Ponder writes, Sarah was making Lois's cookies for cousin Jenny while listening to the Rat Pack, Lois's favorite, when the lights flashed many times. Lois is, I presume, Sarah's grandma who passed away. The security camera captures the activity as Sarah nonchalantly acknowledges the lights are doing it again. The couple thinks she is trying to communicate with them through the lights. Is grandma working in mysterious ways or does this house have an electrical issue? Honestly, the first option is way better. Warning to young explorers, don't enter abandoned malls at night. Jaskin Ho published this footage in September of 2018, illustrating exactly why, explaining that the mall in question is Charlestown Outlet Mall in the US, he writes, This is an older video I thought I'd drop for you guys. The mall closed for good over 30 years ago, and I did record a video here before, but there was talk about the basement level, so we went in. While the first nine minutes reveal your typical exploring of the abandoned mall, nine minutes in, one of the crew peers into a dark room beyond, and that's when he hightails it out of there, followed closely by the rest. One of the bunch says they were running for nearly five minutes. According to the one who first ran, he saw someone in the room beyond. Although the video didn't capture the figure, we can only imagine what this group came across. And with that in mind, I think they made the right choice getting out of their ASAP. Shared by YouTuber Random Videos 5, a supposed witch was captured on camera, approaching the security guard in the street late at night. Let's see it unfold. <laughs> As he nears the wailing sound, he starts reciting a prayer, and then he sees her. The witch comes toward him, wailing. To me, she appears to walk very stiffly and has an uncanny narrow form. The security guard backs away as she continues to bellow. <laughs> 
I think this is a real witch. I've never seen or heard anything like it before. And what I really want to know is if she is cursing him. And are we cursed too by proxy? We better say sorry to this witch before we're cursed next. This is one of the world's most haunted hotels. It was a naval hospital during the 40s and once housed a morgue. Some of its most infamous guests never left. Published by Kelsey Davies in January of 2022, this paranormal investigator and her mom visited the haunted hotel. This is what they found. Kelsey first hears a child's voice as she's wandering the empty hall. I came in. I just heard a little kid. They continue to explore and hear more unexplained noises. After setting up a paranormal device, it starts to go off. They use copper dousing rods to ask the spirits questions. They discover that one is named Lorraine. A short while later, Kelsey asks the young girl she's speaking with to trigger the device, and she does. The lights go off? <gasps> Oh my god. They then enter a creepy hallway and using a Kinect app on the phone, they see a figure standing there. Later, she says she saw a man standing by the door out of the corner of her eye, one that she's seen before in the hotel. You could communicate with anyone, no negative entities, please. Oh my god, I just saw a man. There's a man down here. I think it's the same one. And then the nearby paranormal device goes off. Is this ghost getting nearer? Here's hoping this spirit isn't stalking her. Thank you so much for getting me to 50,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Let's get to 60,000 subscribers next. Thank you.